most important thing is is the seats up front because that for some people is more than the mortgage that they ever paid. Uh, so we talk about CS times. And it, with that, uh, we know there's a community kitchen in Hanwell, for a, not Hanwell, in Wilsden for Area 6D, which prepare hot food daily, right? So if you know there are members who would like a hot meal, it may be require somebody to assist them in collecting it, but this is cooked daily at the Wilsden Church as part of the uh, Area 6D community kitchen. So again, you know, if we know people who are struggling, let us speak to them, okay? I'm not sure, Pastor, if that uh, uh, last year the SEC Women's Ministry had a hardship fund for women uh, in the church, whether or not that is still available. Um, but again, you know, it can be sought out on the SEC website information there. And of course, as a church, you know, we do have Good Samaritan funds that we collect as a church that may help out individual members that may find themselves in that scenario. So again, not a, a pot of gold, but if people are struggling, then it's best to just seek help, okay? Uh, teens concert is coming on the 17th of September, 4.30 p.m. to 5 uh, p.m. So again, it's at the Stanborough School. So if you have teenagers who may be interested in this, then they can check it out. Their Prime Faith Conference is coming up in October. Uh, this has been announced now for a while, so uh, it's a good thing to get your young people involved in this as well. And then there's the teens, uh, SEC Teens Day of Fellowship also in December. Um, so again, these are on the church announcements, which are posted in a gr group, so it should be there. But if you need further information, please see me. There is a prayer healing and restoration uh, series by the uh, SEC Family and Prime Ministries from the 23rd to 25th of September. So again, there is a charge to this. Um, it's at the Denham Gove Hotel. Um, so see me if you need more information. And Pastor Cavallio is also doing what uh, the school bill means for homeschooling parents. Uh, some of us are homeschooling our children, so we need to find out what that means for us. So he's running a session uh, tomorrow from 7 p.m. to 8.30 uh, p.m. Uh, over Zoom. The information is there. Again, it's in the, in the group, but if you need it, please see me for further information. And I believe this was announced last week about Pastor Chisholm, who preached here a couple of weeks ago. You know, he runs a charity or two charities in, in one in Jamaica and one in Kenya that, you know, they help people in need. And so this was put out that a young lady who had a, an accident, serious motor vehicle accident, was injured. And, you know, praise the Lord, she's recovered. She's recovering, but need assistance with her to continue her ed education. So the details are there. If you feel uh, moved to donate to this charity by uh, Pastor Chisholm, then you can by all means do so. We've been hearing lots of noise about COVID and it hasn't really gone away. There's people still getting sick. So we're just saying, you know, let us be sensible. Um, you know, still continue to clean your hands and sanitize it. And, you know, if you're able and you want to and you feel comfortable, then by all means wear a mask if, if, if it makes you feel more comfortable. But let's be sensible, particularly as we start moving into colder periods now to come. And also just reminding, reminder that we ought to you know, try our best to stay in touch with each other and uh, just touch base, make sure folks are okay these days. All right, just keep in touch with them. Thank you for uh, listening to us. Hopefully the praise team will come and join us shortly and they will continue our service. May God bless you.
and Sabbath, everyone. Is telling us this is his last week oh. in Hanwell for a while okay. because he's going away to live in Northampton. Oh. So you'll be away for us. Oh, wow. you know, and I know his heart is broken because <laughs> he has been oh, with, wow. with um, Hanwell all his life. I have known him before I went off to New Bowl oh. to study for ministry. I was a member of um, South Road Church. I preached there on a couple of occasions. So we like to ask God's blessing, and we want to thank Brother Albert for his service here. You know, he's a great musician. He has been um, the first elder of this church for many years, and he has made an enormous contribution to the well-being of this church, spiritually and otherwise. And so he'll be dearly missed. And we know that he'll be, he told me, he'll be back and forth. Because Hanwell would still be his church, even though he is, he is, he will be a, away, physically in Northampton. So we like to wish him God's blessings, God's grace, God's mercy to him and his wife Carol, as they go up to probably greener climes. You know, a lot of, a lot of people are moving away from the city to into the more country, but you know, side because of economic reasons and other, other other reasons. And so we like to wish him God's blessings and God's guidance. You know, because one of the greatest things, I remember when we moved from here south or to live at Watford, we didn't even know we had so much stuff in the house. And moving is a very traumatic experience, emotionally, psychologically, <laughs> and otherwise. And so um, I know you're going through mixed emotions. But I pray that God would give you the strength and the grace. At this time, we want us to stand as we have a prayer and, and ask God to give Brother Albert the grace and the strength that he needs. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're the God of all seasons in our lives, in the good times and the bad times. You're the God who knows us inside out. You understand our emotions. You understand our feelings. Because Jesus wept. And which shows that he was fully human and divine at the same time. We thank you for the contribution that Brother Albert Elder Albert Fletcher has made to this Hanwell Church. We thank you for his constancy. We thank you for his faithfulness. We thank you for his dependability. We thank you for his life of service in this church, as in, in the musical department and in spiritual leadership. We thank you for him. And as he and his wife moves away from London here, from Heston, into Northampton, we pray that you would be with him. You are the God who is everywhere. You are omni omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. And so, God, you know what he is going through. We, we ask that you would give him the strength, the emotional strength, the physical strength, the psychological strength, and the spiritual strength that he needs at this point in time, because you'll be going to an unfamiliar environment. But we pray that you would be with him and you would strengthen him. We know that his, the Hanwell Church community will always be in his heart. And he will, it will be a place that he can always come back and be at home because he has made here his home. So bless him. Bless his wife. Bless his family. And give him the strength he needs at this particular juncture in his life. We pray for your grace to be with him. We pray for every blessing to fall upon him. May your showers of blessing come down upon him mightily. 
as he deals with this transition in his life. And we give you the praise and the glory because you have said, even though when your mother and father forsake you, he, God, will take us up. So thank you, Lord, for him and give him the strength he needs. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to our intro right now, and sorry for the delay again, and we're going to go into our intro right now, and then we'll say our prayer. So if you can please go on your knees as we sing our intro right in the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for bringing us in your presence. Lord, you know who we are and you know what you need from us. So as we come in your presence, we ask of you, Lord, to take full control of our lives. Help us, Lord, to do what you want us to do. Help us, Lord, to live a life that will be pleasing unto you. Forgive us for our sins and our iniquity. We pray, Lord, as we present ourselves to you, that you will come and your spirit will draw nigh. And we will worship you and praise you, for you are worthy to be praised. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So it's my privilege to welcome you as well to church. So do we have any visitors? You know, men? Any visitors? Yes? Oh, give me a wave then for the visitors who are here. Uh, oh, I can see a little tiny wave. Do you want to tell us who you are or are you shy? Are you happy to tell us who you are? <laughs> Joy, lovely to have you. Joy, and is this your family with you as well? Lovely. And do you want to tell us your name? What is it? Tisha and Cutie Pie, the cutie little one. Yeah, you. What's your name, Cutie? Are you shy? Oh. Tisha, do you want to tell us her name? Kylie, Kylie Tisha, and Tysa. Oh, lovely to have you all the case. Lovely to have you all. Are you visiting from there? For oh, part of oh, fantastic. Lovely to have you. Anyone else from North Hall that were worshiping with us today? Yes, oh, lovely to have you guys. Do you want to say your name or do you want to stay anonymous? <laughs> You're happy to say your name? Yeah, thank you. Please stand and say your name. Oh, sis, anything I don't mind? Ivan? 
Abraham, yes? And, and wife, Abraham and wife, yes? Sorry. Lovely to have you both, Sandra. Anyone else from North Hall? Thank you guys for coming to visit with us in North Hall. We're lovely to have you. You will enrich our service. Thank you so much for our regular Hanwell members. Thank you for coming. Brother Albert, sorry to know it's your last. We will miss you. We'll miss the playing of the organ as well. Um, you have been a great support to us for music. So we will really miss you. Um, for the visitors online, YouTube, Zoom, I'm not sure if we're still on Zoom, but for everybody online, thank you for being here with us in our worship. And we pray that as we sing and as we glorify God, that we all will be blessed. I see Dion's mom. I must not, not say hello to you. She's my second mom when my mom's not here. <laughs> She's taking care of me a lot of times. So thank you, Mommy, for coming today. And may you have a blessed day with us today as well. Amen. Okay, um, so I'm going to pass you on to the other ladies who will tell us the first song. And we'll introduce the songs to you. The first hymn we're going to sing today is number 83. Uh, we've heard quite a lot this morning about music and what it does and what it can do to a human being. And so this morning, we'd like you to sing very lustily because we are here to praise God and singing is one way of giving praise and thanks to God. We thank Him for our lives for the week. And now, as we begin, we'll sing for Worship the King, All Glorious About.
we'll use him. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. Shall we please stand?
now have a scripture reading for us done by Benjamin. Today I'll be reading Daniel 2, Daniel 2, um, 44 to 45. All in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be let to other people. It shall break into pieces and consume all those kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke into pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, the gold, the, the great God has made known to, to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. hear a preacher's voice coming, yes? <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll now invite our deacon and deaconesses to pick up the morning tithes and offering, and Brother Andres will pray for us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity of give you back of title offering that we receive for every blessing, for every talent, for times, for resource, for possession that you've given us. Thank you for uh, give us this opportunity to be part of your mission. Bless every heart and give us a, a thankful heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Time for a children's story. And we have with us one of our members from Northall Church, Keisha. Young Keisha will be doing our children's story today. Uh, so children, you can come forward at the sound of your jingles, and Keisha will do a children's story. Hello? Is this on? Oh, okay. Um, hello and happy Sabbath to church. Um, I'm very delighted to be here to do your children's story. My story today is about how prayer is like breathing. If you think about it, breathing is something that we are constantly doing. Have you ever tried holding your breath for a long period of time? 
Uh, hands up if you have. <laughs> Me too. But eventually, you really need to care and have to let go. And why is that? Any ideas? Samuel? There's not enough oxygen in your body. Yeah, that's true. It's because we need to breathe in order to live. And that's how God made us. I want you to remember this um, memory verse. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. And it says to pray without ceasing. This is a simple instruction that God has given us. But does this mean that we are constantly walking around with our eyes closed and head bowed? Most likely not. Most of the time, we're not aware that we're even breathing. It's just natural for us. Just like how God wants it to be natural for us to communicate with him throughout the day. There will be times when we need to catch our spiritual breath. Can any of you give me examples of when you like to pray? In the morning. Yes, that's true. In the morning, as soon as we wake up, <laughs> um, it is important for us to give thanks to God for giving us a new day um, for our life. Any more examples? Yeah? Pray before you eat. Yes, we thank God for the food that he has given us on our tables to nourish our bodies with. Even me, for example, a few months ago, um, I had to sit a very important um, exam for my uh, GCSEs. And this um, exam in particular was physics, which is a subject that I'm not very um, like confident in. But as soon as the invigilator told us that we could open our test papers, um, everyone did that. But for me, instead, I opened my heart to God. I asked him to help me. Um, and I'm very proud to say that I achieved a grade nine. Um, so I find that a um, very important testimony for myself. So, uh, when we breathe, we actually cleanse our bodies. When, so we inhale oxygen and we breathe out ca um, carbon di dioxide. So for the next few minutes, take some deep breaths, breathe in, and ask God to fill your life with blessings and um, help you overcome any challenges in your way. And when you breathe out, God, ask God to forgive and cleanse the areas of your life where you have been disobedient or haven't followed his word. As this story comes to a close, I want you to keep the memory verse of 1 Thessalonians 5.17 in your heart and let our constant breathing remind us to continually talk to our Savior as he is always there for us and will be forever and ever. Thank you. Uh, do you usually close on your prayer? Okay. Um, would any of you like to pray? Okay. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for guiding us. I pray that we understand the story and I pray that we can always, always breathe in God's word and I pray and I pray that um, we'll all have a nice day at church today. Amen. Okay, thank you. Have a blessed Sabbath day. And also for sharing your personal testament with us as well. Amen. Hasn't she done well? Praise the Lord.
Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, this morning, we pray, Lord our God, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us here this morning. We thank you, Father God, for your blessings and mercy towards us, for bringing us through this week and covering us with your precious blood. We thank you, Father God, that where two or three are gathered, you're in the midst of us. We thank you, Father God, that whatever we ask in Jesus' name, that shall it be, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So we continue to praise and glorify your name. And we ask you, Lord, for blessing this morning. We ask you, Lord, our God, that our hearts and minds can be attuned to your word, sent by your servant this morning. We pray, Father God, we empower your servant right now to speak share your word. We pray, Lord our God, that you would drop the words in his spirit and in his mouth, that he may speak only what you would have him to speak. We pray, God, even now, you are filling with your Holy Spirit, that he, O Lord our God, may bring the word that you would have us to hear this morning. Father God, we just want to thank you for health and strength, daily food, roof over our head. We thank you, God, for all you've done. We thank you for our children. We thank you, Father God, for their health, that we are in our right mind. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your love and your Savior, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, God, even now, Father, there are so many issues and so many problems in our society at this time. Dear Lord, but in particular, we lift up, oh God, uh, that your people, Father God, those who are suffering, those who, Lord, who cannot afford the essentials, those, oh Lord, oh God, who are finding it hard with the price of living going up so much. Father God, that we know that the electricity and gas prices will be going up as well. So, Father, we put this matter, situation in your hands now, in Jesus' name. Because only you, Lord, can help us. Father, we cannot depend on the government to help. Father, we cannot depend on man. But, Lord, we can depend on you. And you said you have never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. So, Lord, even now we just pray, in Jesus' name, you will move upon the hearts of the leaders. That, Lord, they will find compassion. That, Lord, they will find you know, generosity in their heart, Lord, our God, and will help the people, Lord. Father, we know, Lord, that the kings, their father, the heart, Lord, our God, you, O Lord, can direct the king's heart. You, O Lord, can direct the leader's heart. Even when they do not want to help, Lord, you can cause them, Father, to find that to help and support the people. So, Lord, we put everything in your hands. Father, we put this situation, Lord, with a crime, the increasing crime that is going on in our society, in your hands also. Father, you see what happened this week where, that sh where they shot the little girl in Liverpool. Father, you see, Lord our God, the increase in violence in our society. So, and we bind that demonic spirit of violence right now and murder in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we invite you, Lord, dear God, in our situation. We invite you, Father God, dear Lord, to move upon the hearts of man. Father God, we know, Lord, in these last days that people's hearts are desperately wicked. So we pray for your divine protection over all of us, Lord, as we go about our business. Father, we pray, Lord, you would protect us and our family. And, Lord, you would keep us. And we pray for those, Lord, who are committing these crimes, that they will submit their life to you. But only through Jesus Christ will they have that change. So, Lord, even now, we put everybody in your hands. Continue to be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, good morning, Hanwell Church. Um, nice to be with you. And um, I just want to add on to the prayers because the Lord has been revealing to me and the Lord has been speaking to me, but I've been in a 
uh, delay. I'm a bit like Elijah hiding behind the rocks. Okay, but um, the Lord is giving me more courage, like David when he had the anointing. So um, in continuation of the prayer, the Lord said, I am a God of truth. Yes, I'm a God of truth. And can I tell you, we're not in his truth. Yeah. So our prayers um, is not to worry about what gas bill, electricity bill, and food, because the Lord says, do not worry for tomorrow. It's the heathens that worry over tomorrow. Yeah, because today has enough of its own. So we are only to worry for them. We are only to concern ourselves for the moment. All right. We don't need to worry what tomorrow will carry. And the Lord said to me in 2017, put me first and not the money. So I don't get an income from anywhere. The Lord will touch someone uh, for, for my need. And he has not failed. He's coming through wonderfully, okay? So we pray and ask the Lord to reveal his truth to us, okay? Because the Lord said, go to my people, um, excuse me, the ones that I scattered over the oceans and enslaved in chains and subject them unto another because they were disobedient to me. He said, they're my people and on my coming, I can only magnify myself through these people. So many of us are leaders in here. Many of us have a purpose. Many of us is to influence the population of people. Okay? But there's been a switch. So we pray that the truth of the Lord will come through and each of us will take up that torch and be who we're really meant to be to make that rightful influence for the coming of the Lord on the earth. Thank you. My sister. I just uh, want to join the pastor as well and just thank Elder Albert and Auntie Carl for their service to Hanwell and what they have done and remain part of the Hanwell family. Amen? Amen. The location may shift and, you know, just into a new location can be a challenge. Um, but we are praying for you guys and we're lifting you up. Um, you know, generosity and hospitality. Auntie Carl has fed many of us uh, over the years kept us fed and so you know we will miss those moments but the lord will create new ones amen. so amen. you know you go with the blessing and hanwell is your home amen? amen so wherever you go it will remain your home and also just want to say to my wife as well happy anniversary it's our anniversary today uh it's amazing how the years have flown by right 15 years uh today uh, for those of you who remember that in, in 2007, you're like, wow, where has the time gone? You know, seeing this, uh, as they say in Jamaica, little Marga boy walking up the aisle, or, or, or skinny for those of you in Britain. Uh, but, you know, here we are, and God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. In that time, he has blessed us with two, two wonderful kids, and so we are grateful uh, for the journey. We know it's not always easy. You know, in Jamaica, there's a saying, Te teeth and tongue must meet, uh, you know. <laughs> What does that mean? It means, you know, you're together, you will have your moments. Arguments sometimes will come. Um, but together, by God's grace, we can overcome those uh, with a determination to do that. So that is something that, uh, of course, is by no means matching up to the, to the feet that many of our older couples in Hanwell have managed some 60, 70 years. You know, we're trying. We're trying by God's grace. We're trying. Maybe we'll get there by his grace. These days, you're not sure how many years you have on the land, so you have to take each moment as it comes and just live for God each moment we have because we're not guaranteed too many years on this land. And some of us, to be quite frank, when we've seen all the troubles around us, we're thinking, come, Lord Jesus, come. We don't want old age to catch us on this earth as well. I see uh, Caroline, welcome. I see you have to give a shout-out welcome as well. Uh, we haven't seen you for a while. It's good to see you in the house. So... My sermon title today is Daniel Saw the Stone. Daniel Saw the Stone. You know, dreams are quite a dramatic thing sometimes, isn't it? 
sometimes some people tell you the, the dreams they've had or nightmares and you wonder how they haven't woken up exhausted. In fact, sometimes you have some dreams you wake up exhausted. You are tired because the activity you had in that dream, <laughs> the running, some of us had dreams where we've been chased by dogs and wild animals and all sorts of things. And when you wake up, you're, you're, you're knackered. I remember one day I dreamt I was at my old high school in Jamaica. And, and dreams are funny things that comes into your mind and give you dreams. You just, Lord have mercy. But I was, we had this water tank in the school. Because, you know, in the Caribbean, sometimes, you know, the water goes off. So you have these tanks. And this was a very tall one. And I don't know why. It wasn't a mango tree. You know? So I don't know. I had no reason to be up there. But I was on this tank. And I dreamt, I, you know, I was dreaming. I was falling off this tank. And it felt so real. I, I, I literally was falling. And the next thing I knew, poof, I fell off my bed. <laughs> so the experience became even more real. Because whilst I was dreaming that I was falling, in reality, I was literally falling. Maybe from not that height, but on my bed. And another time I dreamt, these are the days of, don't judge me, corned beef. Corned beef, you know corned beef? Yes, isn't it? When they were young, we'd make some nice sandwich. White bread, hard dough bread. <laughs> National hard dough bread. Corned beef sandwich. And, you know, I remember I, I was dreaming that I was hungry. My grandma gave me a nice corned beef sandwich. You know, it, was, it looked juicy. You could see the, the middle, uh, s s you know, lot nicely stacked with corned beef inside. And I opened my mouth as wide as I can. And I bit in, only to wake up to realize that there was no sandwich in my hand, but I still had knocked my teeth together. <laughs> so dreams can be very dramatic. So you can spare a thought for poor Nebuchadnezzar when he woke up with such a dream, a dream that left him tired and exhausted and maybe disorientated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for your goodness and your grace. We want to thank you for your mercies upon us. Lord, as you want me to speak to your people, who am I, Lord, that I shall speak? I have nothing to say. So I pray now that you will hide me behind the beams of the cross and speak to me, Lord, because somebody come by here today to hear a word from you. They didn't come here to hear Elder Ducal's voice. They didn't come here to hear Elder Ducal's word. They came here to hear the word of God. And so, Lord, I pray that you will put me, all my flaws, put it away, Lord, and so that somebody may hear you today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So dramatic, dreams. And I, whilst I was telling you, I, I, I could see some of your faces saying, yep, I, I remember some of those experiences. I've had some dreams, you know, as kids. So dreams. And of course, for children, some of those dreams are a nightmare. They wake up crying, you know, and disorientated. I remember once it was, uh, was it Elisa, wasn't she? She had a fever or something. And she must have been hallucinating or something. And I went to see how she's doing. And she's jump up out of bed. She's pointing. It is you. It is you. What was she saying? It was, and she was, I was like, what? So, so she's having, and of course, with children with fever, they can have these serious delusion that happens in their mind. But, but dreams are, 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 are strange things. So Daniel chapter 2 tells us that Nebuchadnezzar went to his bed. He, he dreamt a dream, but he woke up, and he couldn't remember it. Now, I know there are times when you're dreaming, and you wake up, and you're desperate to, to get back into that dream. You're having some good dreams, some nice, nice dreams, and you wake up, maybe to go to the toilet, and those ones are really annoying. And then you're trying to, you know, I remember trying to pause my dream in my head, like a, like a pause button, a sky button. You know, Sky now you can do pause live TV, right? So you're trying to pause the dream and then to get back to it when you go back to bed. You're trying to get into the same position that you were. You're trying to cover yourself in the same way. But try as you may, you just cannot get back to the dream. Maybe on the other occasion it happens where you can jump back into that dream and you feel good about it. But oftentimes you can't. Or sometimes even make it worse. You've had some really good dreams, but then you wake up and you can't remember it. But you knew you had a good dream. A dream you enjoy dreaming. Some dreams you don't enjoy dreaming. But that's when you enjoy dreaming it and you wake up and you can't remember it. It is 
it is frustrating to you because you want to share that dream with somebody. You want to tell somebody about it, but you cannot. So this is Nebuchadnezzar's experience. You know, the man went to bed and he had a dream and he woke up and he could not remember, recall what the dream was. So verse 1 says, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamt dreams wherein his spirit was troubled and his uh, sleep uh, break from him. And then the king commanded all his magicians and astrologers and Chaldeans and, and all the rest of the, the, the great men and minds uh, to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. So the, the king dreamt, could remember it, but he wanted somebody else to remember his dream for him. Sometimes we live amongst irrational and maverick leaders. Jamaica, we say they're mad men. Sometimes we live amongst mad people. You mean to tell me that I can't even remember my own dreams, but you dreamt something, and you can't remember it, and you want me to tell you what you dreamt. And this was the experience. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 9 to 13. He says, look, he asks, of course, Nebuchadnezzar knew some of his magicians were the kind of people that sometimes we engage with in our lives, that they talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. You know, they will come and they will say, no, we can do this, I can do this. They go and they brag and they boast. Imagine these men. For Nebuchadnezzar even to have that thought that his wise men and his magicians could tell him what he dreamt, they must have been giving him the impression that they could do all these things. So, typically, these kind of things don't happen. People don't dream dreams and ask you to tell them what it means or, or to recall what they dreamt. So them saying, you know, we can tell you dreams and we can remind you of all these things may have been something that they used to, to lift their profile. You know, there's some of these stories they say on LinkedIn now where people do small things and when they post it for LinkedIn, you think they have the, the, the president of the country in the act what they've done because there's a ways of, of dressing up your claims that make it seem greater than it is. You know? And so these magicians and these Soothsayers may have been doing the same, but God has a way of finding people out. You can't play with God because he doesn't work in the rational or he doesn't work in the norm. And so he gave something to the king that disturbed his mind, but the king couldn't recall. So now those folks were to earn their money and they couldn't because what they were bragging about being able to do is not something that they indeed could do. But it made the king mad. So he says, but if you do not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. So the king understood his people. Nebuchadnezzar knew his people. In other times, those lies and corrupt words would have worked, but now something was disturbing the king. Till the time be changed, therefore tell me the dream that I shall know that he can show me the interpretation thereof. And the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, or ruler that asks such things of any magician or astrologers or Chaldean. There is nobody in their right mind asks any person to do such a thing. So, king, what you're asking is ludicrous. You are not right in the head to be asking us to tell you such a thing. And the Bible says, and if it is a rare thing that the king require, and there is none other than can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. So the king, sometimes we are, as God's people, put amongst irrational people. They demand of us things that is out of the ordinary. That the ordinary people around will say they're mad. They're crazy. How can you ask such a thing? The reason God allows this to happen, sometimes put us in a situation that we have to really do things out of the ordinary so that God's glory can be declared. 
because he says his glory he will not give to another. And man has a way of bragging and likes to take the boast. Look what I've done. I was able to tell the king I was a great advisor for Boris Johnson. In this, All these things they will do and they will say. But when it comes to godly things and when it comes to things that concern the people of God, not any old person can come and stand to speak on God's behalf. Not any old magicians and trickery and politicians or trickens can come and say these things because God has something to say. And so God wants us to be able to be in this position so strange things happen so his glory can be seen. And so because of what they said, the king was angry. For this cause, the king was mad, angry. And very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. That's a madman. Forget when he was seven years in the wilderness. At this point, he was mad. Because you want to kill every magician, every wise man in Babylon because you couldn't remember your own dream. Do you know sometimes people want to destroy us because they're not happy with their own circumstance? Or they have their own problems? And they project it on other people. And so you make other people feel your pain and your suffering and fru feel the, the fruit of your brutality because of your inability to sort out your own issues. We have to be careful that we don't project our problems onto other people. That is the difference between Nebuchadnezzar and what Daniel did. Because Nebuchadnezzar went to his men to get their solution. Daniel, on the other hand, the Bible tells us, then Daniel answered counsel and wisdom uh, to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth, verse 14, to slay the wise men of Babylon. So this is no joke. They went out. And he answered and said unto Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? The man is irrational. He doesn't even take time to consider what options are there. He wants it now and he can't get it and decide to kill everybody. Then Arioch made the things known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired the king that he should give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. And Daniel went to his house and made all the things known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, uh, his companions. And then they would... Uh, desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellow should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. As God's people sometimes, we, we, not sometimes, as, God pe as God's people, we need to pray. Because sometimes the situation is destructive and it will be destructive for God's people as well. And so we need to pray. And, and by our prayer, even those outside who were bragging and boasting get deliverance, but that's okay. Sometimes our enemy gets deliverance because of our deliverance. Sometimes our enemies are saved because of our prayer. And maybe that's why sometimes we don't want to pray because we don't want our enemies to be delivered. We don't want them to be rescued. No, it's biblical. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he wanted them to be destroyed. He didn't want to go and preach the word of God because he wanted them to die in their sins. This is not uncommon. So we have to be careful as Christians that, you know, we are not so much hatred and bitterness in us for those outside that we don't even want to pray and ask God to intervene in this situation. So the Christian intervention oftentimes can lead to the salvation, even of those who are plotting and doing all manner of things. But God do allow these things to happen so his glory can be declared. And so the Bible says, then was a secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision, and Daniel blessed the Lord. Daniel what? Blessed the Lord. You see, God wants us to know who he is. God needed Nebuchadnezzar to understand who he is, who God of heaven is, before he even gives any interpretation. That is why his God could have allowed Nebuchadnezzar to remember that dream that he had. And he would have got up and he would have told his dream and he would have made something about it and would have had some interpretation. And if he had told it to his men, they would have come and they would have, you know, massaged his ego and they would have told him all manner of things that would, what the king wants to hear. 
right? Do you remember Ahab? He didn't like Elijah because he thought he was always bringing him bad news. So some of these prophets, of, they, 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 they tell people, we, we are in a time now where unfortunately we are surrounded by leaders who don't like truth. They like people who tell them what they want to hear. We saw it in America with Trump. We saw it in the UK with Boris. We saw it in our present politicians today the world over. They don't like men who tell them the truth, or women. They want people to tell them things that they already have in their mind. So this is why God didn't declare this to Nebuchadnezzar. This is why God didn't want him to remember, because God needed them to understand who he is in this scenario. It's not about them. It's about who God is. And so in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 to 23, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed at the times and the season. This is important. He removed who? Kings. Considering what is to come. He removed kings and he set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that knoweth understanding. He revealed the deep secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. In the light dwelleth with the, and the light dwelleth with him. God needed them to understand he, who he is. God needed Nebuchadnezzar to know that he set up kings and he removed kings. Because later on, as you will see, when he gets to understand what the story was about, then, you know, Daniel chapter 3 is not my sermon today, but you know what happened. Do you know what happened? And so, God wants us, us, his people, to declare who God is. And when the world know who God is, then we can reveal things to them. And when we reveal it to them, if they want to heed it as the way we've told them, or they want to go off and do their own thing, or they want to go off and try to stop what God has said, then it's to their peril. But we have already told them how God works. And so the Bible says that the future was revealed to Nebuchadnezzar. So Daniel went and he told the king all that was to come. So from Daniel chapter 29 through, he told him, look, you saw an image. You saw a head of gold and, 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 and silver and brass and iron and feet mixed with iron and clay. You saw a man, an image standing there. And, and, and what you saw, king, the first, the head of gold that you saw is you. It's your kingdom, Babylon, rich and powerful, strong, glorious kingdom, a lion, Majestic, represented uh, majesty and, uh, and gold, wealth. Babylon was so beautiful, you know, and, and so majestic. They say the walls around the city, you could ride horse and carriages on there. It was a city built so confidently, had, he had some of the first, you know, viaducts and things like that. He had means of carrying water around the city. Glorious city. And so Nebuchadnezzar felt this was a, a, a great city. And when he was told about this image that will come, but, but, but be warned, God says, I set up kings and, and I remove them. So you see, you, Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon is the head of gold, but, but, but then there's another kingdom to come, Medo Persia. So Babylon reigns 671 to, to 538 BC, but then another king will come, uh, 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 Medo Persia. And you know the story of Babylon. I don't need to go in there. You know how you know, Nebuchadnezzar had to be sent out into the world to gain sense. And then his grandson, you know, you understood how he was. The man who decided he was going to defile all the things of God decided to have the party in the house and he decided to take all the holy things from, the, from, from God's people and, and use them, desecrate them. You, you know the story of the writing on the wall. You know the story of whilst he was there partying and, and they think that Babylon was so fortified that, that Cyrus was coming and he, and he damned, the, he damned the, 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 the Euphrates. And they walk under the same walls that were so majestic and march in there that night and took the whole city. You know the story. And so Media and Persia came from 538 BC to 531, from Cyrus to, to, to Darius. You know the story of Darius and Daniel in the lines there. And then still the Lord says, shall come another. And Greece rose up in 331 uh, B.C. to 160 B.C. You know the story of Alexander the Great, that young ruler, so, uh, so uh, 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 potent in war and battle that he conquered most of the world, the known world in about 13 years. 
but feeling so celebratory, went and drank himself to death. Kingdom split up into four divisions, and then you know it got weaker because kingdom divided can't stand for very long. And you know the story of the Romans who came in in, in 160 BC to 395 AD. You know the brutality of the Romans never. So each kingdom getting less inferior in, in, in metallic um, order, but more powerful, stronger. Each kingdom becoming more brutal than the one before it. Each kingdom becoming more tainted with the characteristic of false worship and falsehood and persecution of God's people than the kingdom before it. But the most important thing that was happening is that they were falling because the Bible says there were different materials that represent different kingdoms. And you know, Nebuchadnezzar didn't like that. So in Daniel chapter 3, he decided to change a whole image to what? To gold. Telling himself... That he could reign for what? Forever. He could reign forever. So forget the silver and the brass and the, the, the iron and the mix of iron and clay. Babylon will stand forever. Saddam Hussein tried to rebuild the city of Babylon. Even after the first Gulf War, he tried to rebuild it. Lots of the monuments were still standing there in the desert and the sign. And he said, you know, I want to revive Babylon. But God says Babylon shall never be rebuilt. Shall never be rebuilt. Tyre and Sidon shall never be rebuilt. Fishermen shall hang their nets out there to dry. And so when, in his effort to do this, of course, when the second Gulf War happened, 2003, the U.S. Army, they marched into that part of the world and destroyed everything, even more destruction than what was there previously. You see, the words that God says does not return to him void. They go forth and they accomplish that which he pleased. There is no man, there is no power that can stop the word of God. That is why God established in, in Daniel chapter 2, 20 to 23, who he is, who the character of God is, so that when these folks are mistaken, when they sit in their situation rooms, be it in the, in the White House or in, in, uh, in, in, in Moscow or in, in Paris or in London, wherever they sit, these leaders, and think that they can defy the power of God, they should know that the word of God will be established in the earth. What God says will come to pass. And so that is why we don't need to worry. Yes, the situation looks troublesome. Yes, the situation looked dire. It always have looked dire for God's people. But then God will stand up later on in the same book of Daniel chapter 12. Daniel says he saw Michael standing up. When he sees that all God's people will be destroyed, Michael stood up. The same vision that Nebuchadnezzar saw, Daniel saw a similar vision in chapter 7. This time looking at it from not a political perspective, but solely the religious perspective. So much so that Daniel saw some things that made him sick. When he saw what would happen to the people of God in the last days, it made him physically sick. So we're not at the end of it. It's the beginning of trouble. But that is why it's important for us to know who God is. What he requires of us. There are folks who will tell us this is how we are to worship. This is what we are to believe. This is what we are to now accept and live by. The world will dictate by laws and dictate how we should live and what we should accept as normal and as right. But the word of God has declared to us what is right. And Joshua, I will rather obey God than man. So sometimes we will lose our positions. Sometimes we lose our job. Sometimes we lose our friends, even our relationships, whatever. We will lose house and land, mother and father, but are we going to stand up on the promises of who God is? And so, the feet and the toe from 496 AD to our present time. We are in this time. But then, there was something amazing that happened. That in all these kingdoms being set up and all the characteristics being taken from one to the next and all the false worship being carried down through the nations and it's been spread around the world and men has been rebellious and disobedient and feel that they could, they could conquer everything and, 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 and go on forever. Superpowers come in our time. You are the USSR. Who remember that? 
You had Hitler who thought he could dominate all of Europe. We had America who feel that they will dominate. We have the Chinese who feel they can dominate. But then something amazing happened. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 to 45 says this. And in the days of these kings, hallelujah, Amen. in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. In the days, in the height of their power and their pomp and their arrogance, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom, which shall what? Never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand for what? Forever. Because this is it. For as much as thou sowest that stone that was cut out of the mountains without hand, that it break in pieces the iron and the, the, the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold, and the great God have made known unto the king what shall come to pass thereafter. And the dream is what? Certain. And the interpretation is what? Sure. There's a song we used to sing in Jamaica. Daniel saw the stone rolling down to Babylon. Daniel saw the stone, the little white stone rolling down. Because from a distance, it looks small. It looks tiny. It seems insignificant. But as it's coming closer, as it begins to get closer, it begins to become more and more magnificent. And it comes and it smashes the gold and the brass and the silver and the iron and the clay because the kingdom of God shall be established. God is in control. So in the height of their power, in the height of their arrogance, God will establish his kingdom. Amen. We do not need to fear. It is not going to be World War III that put an end to this world. It is not going to be nuclear annihilation that puts an end to this world. It's going to be the God who sends the stone. And so God's people today need to be assured and confident that our future is tied up in that stone rolling down to Babylon. Sometimes it feels so oppressive. When we think of the persecution and the, the problems and the oppression, we think, how is this all going to end? When is it all going to end? Brothers and sisters, I want to assure you today that God will establish his kingdom. He has promised to establish his kingdom, and it shall never be removed. There is no other kingdom after that stone is established. There is none, nada. Revelation tells us that as the kingdom was coming down, the devil decided to go to the great men of this world. The men who feel that what was coming, come on somebody, belonged to them. They saw the city of God hovering above the earth for the righteous coming in that city, the new Jerusalem. A perfect cube pastor described it as the last time. 1,500 miles around every perimeter of it, high in depth, the same. Perfect cube. Imagine a city 1,500 miles wide, long, high. You can see from anywhere. And they saw that coming, and he told them, the devil told them, this belongs to you. It is not for the people of God. It is you. We should go and take it. The arrogance. I'm saying we are living amongst arrogant men today. Men who feel that they can tell you what marriage is. They can tell you who a man or a woman is. They can tell you how you need to educate your children. They can tell you what you need to drink, what you need to eat, what you need to buy. They can tell you where you need to go and how you need to work. They feel they can defy the law of God. They feel they can defy what God has established. That is the same thought Nebuchadnezzar had. That is the same thought Belshazzar had. It is the same thought, you know, Cyrus had. And all these great leaders. It is the same thought Alexander had. And these great men of old, they've all had this thought. Where are they today? Daniel saw the stone rolling down to Babylon. You know, 
when I first came into the Adventist church, these were the messages we were hearing and being reminded of. Sometimes we have gone quiet on these sort of messages. We have gone quiet on these things when the Bible says the vision is sure and the interpretation thereof is sure. Jesus is coming. So I know we are in trouble sometimes. I know we're in uncertain times. I know we're in times when economically it's a, it seems like the worst. It's just building. You can see it. I describe it as a pot of water boiling. You can see the bubbles coming up from the bottom. You know those little bubbles that when the heat starts to hit the bottom, they rise first. And then it begins to boil. Let us not become like the frog who stays in that water so comfortably until it starts boiling. Let us be able to recognize that we are in the last days. And God is about to wrap this thing up. And so we need to keep our spirit board. We talk about praise this morning. We need to be lifting each other up in praise. There are times when we are down, we are, we are struggling, we, we feel sometimes depressed. We feel like we don't want to pray, we don't want to praise. Sometimes we don't even want to read our, our Bibles, our, our relationships are failing, our children are disobedient sometimes. And we are thinking, Lord, what is happening to us? Are we going to perish? My friend, hold on in there. The kingdom of God is coming. Daniel saw the stone and it's rolling down to Babylon. It will establish a kingdom. Don't give in. Don't give up. Hold on to Jesus. We can feel it. I can feel it. Sometimes we are struggling. We, we find it hard to pray, to praise, to read. But let's go back and understand first who God is. Before you understand, before you try to understand any vision, any prophecy, go and have a relationship with God. It is not by knowing the prophecy that saves us. It is knowing who God is, who Jesus is, that will be our assurance in these times. So, God is the one to wrap things up. That is reassuring. It is not the madness of our politician and of our modern leaders. It is not the sophistication of our, the sophisticatedness of our weaponry and our armory that will wrap this up. God is the one who will wrap it up. His kingdom shall not be conquered. Nahum 2.9 says, affliction shall not rise up a second time. That is something to praise God for. Because I would not want to be in a place where the possibility of sin could come back. You've seen what is done here. Let us get ready for the rolling of that stone. Let us stand and see it rolling down. We are standing in Babylon. Let us see the stone rolling. Rather than be frightened, let us rejoice that the stone is rolling. Amen? The stone is rolling not to crush the people of God. The stone is rolling not to, 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 to squash them underneath. The stone is rolling to destroy all the enemies of God's people. And then to establish his kingdom in which it shall be theirs and not another. So let us rejoice whilst the stone is rolling. We thank Brother Duco for reminding us where we need to be and what frame of mind we should be in. So we pray that as we worship the Lord tonight, as we worship the Lord, we will remember that we need to see the signs before it happens so we know how to live, what to do, and how to continue in our Christian journey. And we'll sing a closing song, which is hymn. Hold on to pray. Oh, yes, trouble. And I have it up here now. <laughs> trouble, so trouble sometime is coming soon. I believe you guys know it. But it you go, it's not in the hymn now. It's going to be presented. Um, do you guys this tune? Yeah? So for those of you who know it, please help us and sing. So shall we please stand? Trouble in time. Trouble sometime. Trouble sometime.
Jesus is coming soon. And we know Jesus is coming soon. And so, as I said, sometimes we're struggling. We're struggling in our faith. We're struggling in, in our walk. And if you want to, like myself, want to have that assurance that we are part of that kingdom to be established. If you want to say, Lord, today I want to make and recommit my life to you so that I can have the assurance, your sure word, that I'm part of that kingdom to be established. And I ask you raise your hand whilst I pray. If you want to say, Lord, here I am. I want to recommit my life. I want to recommit myself. I want to recommit, you know, all that I am to you. Then let's just raise our hands. The Lord is seeing that as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, you've seen today your peoples have stood and they have raised their hands, Lord, saying that we know that you are coming soon. Trouble sometimes are here indeed. But Lord, that is not the, that's not the meat, the crux of it. Lord, Jesus is coming soon. That's the excitement. Because, Lord, then all our troubles will be over. All the fighting and all the murders, all the sickness and all the energy bill and the food prices increase and all the, the aches and the pain and the, the lack of health care, the lack of care, the racism, the, the violence, the prejudice, the sexism, the misogyny, all those things, Lord, will be done and dusted because Jesus is coming soon. And so, Lord, because you are coming soon, we do not want to be missing. We do not want to be amongst those whom the stone is crushing, Lord. We want to be amongst the number for whom the stone is the establishment of a new order, of a new kingdom, one that will reign forever, one that shall never be conquered. And so, Lord, today we pray that whatever our position today, wherever we are coming from, Lord, spiritually, no matter how far we are right now, Lord, on the road to recovery, on the road to reconciliation, on the road uh, to redemption, dear Father, Lord, uh, seal us up for your glory. Amen. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Cover us with the grace of Jesus. Wash us with his blood, dear Father, Lord. There is not a sin so great that you can't forgive. There's not a depth that we can sing to, Lord, that your hands cannot reach us. There's not a prison bar so strong that you cannot break down. There's no change so powerful, Lord, that you can't shatter. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we pray all those circumstances that have us bound, break them today, Lord, and set us free. Yes. Set us free because him who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah. So, Lord, thank you for the assurance that you're coming soon. Thank you for the sure words and the interpretation that is sure that your kingdom shall be established. Thank you, Lord, that for the promise that we'll be standing on the sea of glass. Thank you, Lord, for the promise that you will establish a new heaven and a new earth, and that, Lord, this will be the kingdom of your people. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> we'll sing our doxology, Jesus. Show. 
Just to thank those who took part in our service today, those who joined us, and our platform and Zoom as well. Thank you so much, and we pray for those who came and fellowship with us today. I hope you've been blessed by God's grace. So thank you to our music team, our musicians, and um, Keisha for doing the children's story, Benjamin for um, doing the scripture reading, and Andreas for praying us and Michelle. Thank you. May God bless you. Bye. Um, and can I have... Um, those who are, who, um, is part of the praise team, can I just get you to come in front so we can go into groups really quickly, including you, Lavinda, and Faith, and Elysia. And if there's anyone from the North Hall Church who want to join our praise team, please don't be shy. Come and sing with us together as well. So if we can get all the people from the praise team just to come in front so we just go into groups really quickly. Thank you so much. Thank you. 